Our first lesson of the year is about the order of operations. Uh, we're going to be covering this for the next three weeks, but we're going to be doing it in a pace that should not be too intimidating as long as you uh, do your best to kind of keep up. Uh, for the most part, if you have issues with attendance, make sure you try your best to watch these videos since they will be on Canvas. That way, at least you can keep up with the information and then that way when you get back, you can have something to kind of build on. The order of operations is probably one of the most difficult math processes. Uh, it introduces you to algebra with a set of rules that must be followed, and people typically go one of two, one of three directions. It should say three directions. They listen, they try, they succeed. So what I'm asking you to do, or what your teachers are asking you to do, is to listen to what we have to say, try it out. Because again, even though you might have had issues with math, um, you're older, you're smarter, your brain keeps developing. And you're good enough if you believe that you can just at least try it. And then when they try, they succeed. Then you have people that listen and try. Again, these two things are important. Uh, and they mess up, which is what we're kind of here for. But as you accept the fact that everybody kind of messes up, you keep trying. And then you keep falling short. And then eventually you start to improve. And then eventually as you improve, you succeed. So that is also a good track. What you don't want to do in here, because this is just not a good position to take is don't listen, don't try, and then you get mad at the teacher when everything kind of builds up because math class is kind of like everything that we're doing every day is going to build on something else. There are times when you can get away with not knowing one thing and still be okay, but there's a lot of moments where if you're not up to speed, uh, it's going to be confusing. It can be frustrating, so try your best to make sure you don't do that. Our goal is to pretty much reach the students in groups one and two which is the ones that at least listen and try. Um, but we can't force you to actually want to get better. We can give you the best opportunity to make the most out of each lesson, but again, that's about it. Today's lesson is not going to cover the complete order of operations, which you might be used to. It's just going to focus on what I would call the ground level. Uh, we should have seen some sort of mnemonic device such as PEMDAS by now, uh, but understand you might have been taught incorrectly. And again, I'm not blaming anybody. A lot of people um, that teach math don't have math degrees and they have not really had to go as in depth as the teachers that you have in your room right now. Uh, PEMDAS pretty much helps you remember P for parentheses, E for exponents, M for multiplication, D for division, A for addition, S for subtraction. This hierarchy does have some flaws that people forget to emphasize. And so I'm going to emphasize these right now so that in your class you can kind of keep up. The parentheses does not work for just any parentheses. Hopefully you did a multiplication exercise when you started the class. And what you should have noticed is that this means two times six. This is not a parentheses. This is multiplication. This means one times seven. That's not a parentheses. That is multiplication. It is a notation for multiplication. These are not this level of the order of operations. It is this level of the order of operations because that is multiplication two times six, one times seven, six times eight. And you need to make sure you're there. Second thing, M is not above D. They are on the same level, just like A is not above S. So the big flaw with your order of operations is that when you write it like this, people tend to see think if they see addition and subtraction, that addition goes first, subtraction goes second. That is false. That multiplication always goes first, division always goes second. That is also false. And so because of the fact that those are like that, even some teachers who don't really pay attention to detail because, again, they weren't math majors like we are, uh, your teachers that you have now, they don't pay attention to that small thing because they assume it's going to work and it does not work. So it does help if you try to view it this way. So if you want to write that down for yourself real fast, that's fine. But and not so much writing it down for you to study and keep notes, but things that you write down, you tend to remember. And this is important. Parentheses is definitely the king. Exponents is definitely the queen, but when it comes down to it, multiplication and division are on the same level. Addition and subtraction are on the same level. So this way you can actually remember that these two are on the same, these two have the same power, those two have the same power. So in the ground level, A and S, addition and subtraction, I would say view it like students in a lunch line. If you saw these people in a lunch line, who would get fed first? So if John's in line, then Melissa, then Tracy, then Jackson, then Kenneth. We're going to feed Tracy first, right? No. We're not going to feed Melissa first. You're going to feed John first. John is in line first. John's going to get fed first. Melissa's in line second. She's going to get fed second. Tracy is third. Jack is fourth. Kenneth is fifth. 
That's natural. You've lived this. You understand it. That is why the order of operations shouldn't be too hard to start off in terms of the ground level because this is the way we live life. When you're in line at the mall and you're here and they help this person, these three people definitely make a problem and you don't want to do that. So like I said, order of operations in terms of addition and subtraction, pretty simple. Whoever's in line first, go straight across. That's it. So if you imagine you're the first person in line and the fourth student gets their food, you'd be kind of mad. So um, that's how the order of operation works. You want, want to be sure that you don't cheat one operation over another or there's going to be issues. And the good news is as long as it's or, or uh, just addition and subtraction, you just feed the first sign in line and then rewrite. This is the key part. Uh, that is also the part um, that causes issues, which I see on this next page here. The big issue for order of operations also is the fact that rewriting is gets old after a while and you don't think you want to do it but the rewriting part of algebra is important in a lot of chapters so don't ignore your organization or it is going to cause you issues later down the line so yes we don't like to rewrite the same thing or what we would think the same thing five or six times but it does help out a lot if you just do it because it's going to build a skill uh, if you are not quote unquote good at math it's probably because you're you're you haven't exercised a few muscles well this is a muscle that you need to work on and so when we're asking you to rewrite we're not asking you to do it so we can punish you we're asking you to do it so you can exercise the muscle of writing down what changed and then keep bringing down everything else that is the same so again we know that you can make it through this course but it's going to be up to you to kind of do the exercises that we ask you to do um, what we try to do here is a uh, process where it starts out where I will do a problem and all you do is um, watch pretty much and then after that then you know if there's a question write it down or if you're at home and you're watching this write down your question or email me or email your teacher whatever your question is because you need to get your questions answered but what I'm going to do now is work out a few problems don't write this portion just watch the whole process ask after the process or after the problem's been completed. Um, the order of operations itself is this. This is what it's about. And so what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to take eight plus three minus two minus one plus six. The first person in line and we're looking at the operations, not the numbers. This is what it's about. It's not about the numbers in between. It's which operation goes first. This is the first operation. 8 plus 3 goes first, which is 11, minus 2, minus 1, plus 6. That's your rewrite part, because we did not change the minus 2, minus 1, plus 6. Then we do first operation in line, which is minus 11, minus 2, which is 9, minus 1, plus 6. Then we go here, and we say, okay, we have these two. That is the first operation in line, so we do that operation first. 8 plus 6 turns out to be 14. What you don't do is say to yourself, additions first and assume that everything works. So that is addition. And then, hey, there's addition. And so you do that 11 minus 2 minus 7 because 1 plus 6 is 7. And then you say, okay, here we go. 11 minus 2 is 9 minus 7 and 9 minus 7 is 2. Those are two different answers. And the reason this one is wrong is because you skipped over these two people in line to get to that one. That is not the way you do it. Do not do it that way. But again, make sure you follow the idea of if it's just addition subtraction, feed the first operation in line every single time. And pretty much it's not even that hard because you're only doing one operation. And then you're looking at this and doing one operation and rewriting, and then doing one operation, then doing one operation and finishing. But please do not assume that addition is stronger than subtraction because if you do this first, this second, you get the wrong answer. So please be careful. Point of honesty, I can't remember one student who has chosen to ignore the proper method to actually pass this chapter. Another one, students who ignore the proper method typically fail a lot because they think they know how to do it, they don't want to listen to the teacher, they don't want to really learn the right way to do it, and so therefore they end up having issues because even though the teacher is teaching them the right way, they think they can do it without them and they don't make it and they have to take the class next year. So be careful. What you should do, especially if you're watching this at home, because if you were in class, this would be a time we take time to do it. Work out this first, pause the video, work out this first problem, and then hit unpause or play and then check to see where you might have messed up. Because again, we're here to mess up. We're here to make mistakes, but just try it out real quick. 
and then go from there. So pause the video now, please. And now I am going to go over the answer. This is all addition and subtraction. P E M D A S. These two are on the same level. So therefore, you feed whoever's in line first. Nine minus three is six, copy everything else. And this, all on the same level. Six plus two is eight, copy the rest of it. Same thing, eight plus one is nine, copy the rest of the information. Nine minus four is five, that should be it. Nine minus three is six, six plus two is eight, eight yeah. If you made a mistake, it's probably because you skipped over one of these things. I suggest that you underline whatever's there or do some sort of organization to kind of keep your eye on what you're doing. That way um, you don't get lost in terms of your rewrite because you will not always be doing what's in front. As sometimes you'll jump in the middle when we get to these other operations here. But again, the key idea is just to make sure that you are ready for that part. So again, if you had a question on that, write it down or email it to your teacher. That should take care of what you need. Um, just be clear, you know, just say, hey, I'm looking at the notes. This is the problem that I have. And I got this answer. And this is the work. Make sure you show the work. But this is the work I did. And that's what I got. Can you tell me what I did wrong? And they'll be glad to help you out. Teachers tend to like students that ask questions because when you ask questions early, you won't kill us with questions right before a test, which is what people like to do. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one. And again, when you're done, uh, hit play again. And let's see what happens. Go ahead and pause the video now, please. And now I'll go over the answer. Um, again, all addition subtraction, 8 plus 7, 15, copy the rest, minus 2 plus 3 minus 1. All addition subtraction, whoever's in line first, 13 plus 3 minus 1. All addition subtraction, so whoever's in line first, 16 minus 1, which is 15. If you made a mistake and you can't see it, again, the key idea is eventually you learn to see it, but if you made a mistake and you cannot see it, talk to somebody, get some assistance. Go ahead and pause the video now for C. Take a second to do that, please. And now I'll go over the answer. All addition subtraction, whoever's in line first. 10 minus 6 is 4. All addition subtraction, whoever's in line first. 4 plus 2 is 6. All addition subtraction, so it's all on the same level. 6 minus 1 is 5, and then 5 plus 7 is 12. Do not be afraid to use your fingers or counters or whatever you need. You shouldn't have to do anything too big because if you get something like 13 plus 18, remember that there is also two column parts. So the most you have to do is eight plus three. So eight, nine, 10, 11, which is one carry the one, one, one and one make three or whatever it might be. As much as we're intimidated by this stuff, it's really not that bad once you just kind of get into it and do it. So once again, please pause this video and try this one just to see where you get. And I'll go over the answer now. All addition subtraction, 5 plus 7 goes first. All addition subtraction, 12 minus 6 goes next. 12 counting down 6. If anything, again, if you don't know what that is or you're bad at this, put down dots for the lowest number 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And from 12, because we're subtracting, count down all these dots. So 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Anything like that will work. To help you through it but you just need to kind of use it and finish from there your final answer should be seven and that is what you're looking at all right so many people think that practice makes perfect they are wrong practice makes permanent and what that means is if you allow yourself to practice something the wrong way then it becomes a habit it becomes a permanent thing and then it becomes difficult to break that is why you get mad at your teachers right before the test right before the quiz or right after the quiz when you don't do well because you swear that you did everything right, but what you did was you practiced wrong, you formed a permanent habit, and then you did not fix it in time, and so then you get mad at somebody because in your world everything made sense, but it made sense because it was wrong and you did it the wrong way. So make sure to work properly even if you feel it's moving too slow. Speed is not the goal, understanding is the goal. Just make sure you take time to ask questions as you need to, and then understand that there is a quiz at the end of the week on everything that we do from this week. So the reason why we get this stuff in the way we do is so you can actually practice, so you can actually do what you need to. So outside of that, good luck, and I will talk to you later.